Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today we'll be covering four names of Allah, Al-Awwal, Al-Akhir, Al-Zahir, and Al-Baqin. Uh, names that have the meanings of the first, the last, the manifest, and the hidden. So these names are essentially the pillars of knowledge. They cover everything. They're listed in the Quran and Surah Hadid together as the first, the last, the ascendant, the intimate, or the manifest and the hidden. Uh, and there's nothing big or small that uh, escapes uh, knowledge in this aspect and escapes the knowledge of Allah in this with these names, that Allah is the first and the last and thus encompasses time uh, as a whole, and that Allah is ascendant and intimate, encompassing all space. So space and time are all contained within these uh, the the container of al awwal al akhir al zahir al batin and so all of this is contained within and so we see that Allah is the first before everything the last after everything and Allah is the manifest who is above everything and the intimate who is closer to everything than it can than it can uh, possibly know and so the these names all together combine attributes of greatness and closeness that cut across time and space and so to begin with al awwal and al akhir uh, we have the Prophet ﷺ lifting up the hadith, uh, lifting up in a hadith that any matter of importance that doesn't begin with Bismillah or in the name of Allah to begin with is a matter that is incomplete uh, or it's a matter that is not uh, fulfilled or finished. And so what we want to take a look at in a sense is when looking at this name is that think about what the first thing is that you think about when waking up in the morning. Uh, you know, there's there's this adage that says that if you want to know what your priorities are, reflect on the first thing that you think about in the morning, whatever is foremost on your mind, not only sets the tone for your day, but it can determine your destination, uh, in a sense, not your destination, like in, a, in like an ethereal sense, but in a sense of if my mind is on my, it's on money, uh, my you know, the first thing I think about is money and earning money, that my destination is going to be something of just wanting to procure money or just earning money, whatever it looks like, whether, you know, uh, a big amount or small amount, but at the end of the day, that's what I will uh, get. And that's what I will be um, receiving. And the process I'm touched upon this, that, you know, every people who chase this world will be given of this world. People who chase of the Akhira will be given of the Akhira. And so thinking about what is the first thing that we wake up with? Uh, do we do we think about it starting our day off with a Bismillah, starting our day off with the Alhamdulillah, that, you know, thank you Allah for allowing us to just experience this. Thank you Allah for allowing us to begin uh, this and beginning with Allah's name or do we think about something else and it's very natural to be able to wake up and be like oh crap like i'm late for work or uh you know oh no i'm, I'm like doing this or whatnot so you're you're in a zone where you're very fixated on the concerns of the worldly uh desires because that's something that is is you know uh equated to be necessary to our survival and just primary concerns but this uh, these names help us take a step back and say that we can, we, the worldly things will be there, our commitments will be there, but our duty to Allah is something that is, it should be a constant. And so how do we, how do we internalize this uh, to be not just something we start at the beginning when we get in the car, say Bismillah, when we, you know, just do uh, eat our food, say Bismillah, but to actually wake up with that mindset that says that Allah is first. Uh, and so we begin it with acknowledgement, we begin it with gratitude, and we begin it in Allah's name. And so Think about your day. If, is your day complete if you begin it without the name of Allah? As the Prophet said that any action of importance that is not started with Bismillah is, it, is left incomplete. Think about how many of our days have been incomplete. Um, and so, so lifting that up as well, that uh, Allah tells us that uh, in these names, uh, that he is the first, the last, the awal, and al-akhir, uh, which Al-Ghazali explains saying that when you ponder the order of existence and consider the order, uh, cha the ordered chain of beings, that Allah is the most high, uh, that Allah the most high is the first with respect to it. And then whenever you ponder the order of wayfaring and observing uh, the states attained by those journeying towards Allah, he is the last and final point. So he was the first beginning and is the final return. So the first and the last having this meaning, not just in the space time sense of Allah being the first before anything, the last after everything, but also being the first 
uh, pers- the first um, destin- the first starting point of our des- of our journey um, that we began with Allah and Allah is our destination who is the final destination for us and so to know that that Allah is first is to see Allah before everything before even the physical and so everything le- leads back to Allah uh, ask yourself where you are in this point in life where do you feel like you are going you know is your trajectory more going into this world is it more going into the satisfying the immediate needs of this world is it after a certain worldly pursuit a good job good income you know family stability whatever it is uh, or do you feel like you're going in a different trajectory and and one as we're coming out of ramadan of god consciousness of uh, building that connection to allah where there may not be a definitive boundary that says hey you're, you're getting an income tax return you're getting a w9 that tells you how much you're making you're getting all this different stuff uh you know your w2 or whatnot but you you're you're actually Actually being able to build off of this and, and, and go towards Allah. So when we try to incorporate these names, we want to make a conscious effort to remember Allah at the beginning and end of everything, just as a, as a, as a matter of fact, just as a matter of incorporating into our habits that uh, when we start the day off, we start off with the name of Allah. When we end the day, we end with the name of Allah. Uh, because as the Quran says that, remember Allah and he will remember you. So we want to put into practice the knowledge of Allah's attributes as the first and the last. And it brings us back to our ultimate purpose, uh, which is to worship Allah. But uh, in, a, in a sense, not just worshiping Allah in the ritualistic sense, but to worship Allah as the created beings um, from Allah, that uh, our return, our start was with Allah and our return is with Allah. So it helps us remind ourselves of who we are, uh, what we're doing, as well as where we're going. The last names that we have today are Al-Zahir and Al-Baltin, the manifest and the intimate. Allah is manifest in his existence, yet Allah is hidden from our sights. Allah is Al-Zahir, um, or the manifest in, in his transcendence, obvious to anybody who reflects, and above all is Al-Baltin in his subtlety, that, that you sometimes is hidden in, in just the subtlety of how Allah works in the world and how Allah makes different things happen. We've talked about provision, we've talked about the mercy that rains down, we've talked about all these different things that we don't realize, but when we sit and reflect, we can start to see uh, in this subtleness. Um, and so Al-Zahir means, uh, the meaning of Al-Zahir includes aiding and supporting uh, those who are righteous and, and cultivating the righteous servants in, in, a, in a helpful space. Uh, Al-Baltin is not only hidden from our sights, but knows every hidden thing in the world, uh, what goes through our minds and what is manifest in our hearts and our actions, as well as what is hidden in our actions and our hearts and our intentions. So Allah sees our external, Allah sees our internal as well, and they're both equally important. And so when we worship Allah with these names, we become even more conscious of our internal and external we focus uh, on both inward and outward goodness, not just on one or the other. We see that they're both formative in that aspect and they're both essential. Uh, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim says that when we worship Allah by the name of Al-Zahir, we know where to direct our prayers because there's no one uh, above Allah. Worshiping Allah while we know that Allah is al-Baltin is something that we have to taste because it is something that words cannot describe because uh, Allah is the one who knows your heart and soul intimately. So when we live with these names, we, uh, we begin with starting with them, uh, with starting with Allah, our actions and our days with Allah, and we end with Allah and we end with our, our days with, our, uh, with Allah and our actions with Allah. We pray uh, at these specific points so you can keep that connection. So whenever we say something like Alhamdulillah or Bismillah, this in, in and of itself is a small supplication that we lift up. So we're keeping that connection and prayer is a form of connection. So we start our day, we end our day with prayer. Uh, we keep that connection. We see, we also reflect and we want to see how Allah is manifested in everything. We want to talk about how Allah's names are manifested everywhere. When we see mercy in uh, the human and the non-human world, when we see uh, compassion, when we see love, when we see justice, when we see all these things, connect that back to Allah because these are deriving from Allah. Uh, all of this is directed to Allah, but also uh, crave that reconnection with Allah, crave that desire to be able to um, be uh, as with Allah, as close with Allah as Allah is close to us. So crave that and then let our inward match our outward, that Allah sees both. You know, for Allah, the, that which is on the inside is just as much on the outside as what is on the outside. Other people may only see what's on the outside, not on the inside. But for Allah, both of these are wide open and seen exactly the same. So inshallah, as we go through these names and as we uh, go through these days, inshallah, we lift up that uh, Allah enable us to be 
uh, people who see Allah as our first, as our awal when we start our actions, when we start our days, and allow us to be people who see Allah as al-akhir or the final um, in our days and our actions and our thoughts and everything, and to be al-zahir in all the world around us and to be al-baltin in the times that uh, we, we, we need the most and to help us uh, be uh, people that seek uh, Allah in the manifest existence, but also seek Allah in the hidden, in the times when we might not think about Allah, that Allah becomes manifest in those times, but Allah becomes intimate in those times. So inshallah, we pray of these things. And until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.